All CSS properties have a value assigned to them. Let's talk about the types of values, specifically the numerical units that are allowed. Every property used in CSS has a value type defining the set of values that are allowed for that property. The values can be different types. They range from numerical values or keywords. It is common that many properties accept numerical units. These can be used to specify width, height, thickness, size, and in some case colors, and even CSS-based animations to control the speed and amount of times the animations can play. Some numeric data types can be used with whole numbers only. Some can be used with decimal points. Others specify dimension and require a unit attached to it, such as degrees or milliseconds. The numeric type that you will come across most frequently is length. For example, 10 pixels or 30 m's. There are two types of lengths used in CSS, relative and absolute. It's important to know the difference in order to understand how big things will become. Absolute length units are not relative to anything else and are generally considered to always be the same size. Absolute values are a fixed unit and are always the same size, regardless of any other settings declared in a related element, such as the parent element. Many of the units that are listed here are most useful for print rather than screen output. For example, we typically don't use centimeters, millimeters, or inches on websites. The only value that you'll commonly use from the absolute category is going to be pixels. Relative length units are relational settings. Relative length units are relative to something else. Values declared in a parent or ancestor element will have effect on the units used on the child or descendant elements. The benefit of using relative units is that with some careful planning, you can make it so that the size of text or other elements scales relative to everything else on the page. Some of the most useful units for web development are listed here. They are M, Rem, Percent, Viewport Width, and Viewport Height. Let me show you some examples. Here's the page that we'll be working on for this example. I have a main element and it has an H1 and a paragraph, and then there are four div elements. They all have a class of box. I've already set up some basic CSS styling. I have some declarations declared on the body, and I have a few declarations declared on the box elements. As you can see, these properties have associated values. These are either keyword values or they're taking some sort of numeric value. For the most part, I'm using the absolute numeric values of pixels for all of my elements. Let's look at some of the other units that we can incorporate into our web pages. Before we can start sizing the various elements on our web page, we need to understand where the sizes are coming from in relationship to the browser. If we open up our inspector, we can get the information that we need here. For instance, if I come to the H1 element, you can see that the font size is specified as two M's. Well, what does that mean exactly? The M unit of measurement comes from the width of an M character used with type. This is a very popular relative unit that is used on the web. If you want to find out what size 2Ms is, you can go to the computed tab right here, and this is going to give you more information. Since we have not defined anything about our H1s, all of the information that this particular element has is from the browser, the user agent style sheets. So if we look at font size, you can see the font size is set to 32 pixels. The base font size for all web pages is 16 pixels. So when we specify that we want the font size to be 2 M's, that's just like multiplying 2 times 16, which gives us 32. So knowing that our default or base font size is 16 is going to be important for our calculations. What we are going to do is we're going to restyle some of the properties on these elements. So let's go ahead and make a selector for H1. On the H1, let's go ahead and let's redefine the font size. If I specify a font size of 36 pixels and save, when I refresh, you can see that the size of the font gets slightly larger. 
And now, if we look under our computed tab, the font size has been set to 36 pixels. If we go back to styles, you can see that the user agent style sheet font size has been crossed off. That's because of specificity. My declared font size is overwriting the user agent style sheet. Let's go ahead and make some rules on the P element. I'm going to set the font size to 15 pixels and I'm also going to set the line height. Line height is like letting. It's the spacing between lines. I'm going to set this to 1.2. It is worth mentioning that line height is one of the properties where you do not put a unit of measurement. The reason why is because line height is a ratio. We are basically saying we want to use 1.2 times 15 and that's going to specify the line height. I need to save my page and now if we refresh you can see that the paragraph has changed slightly. If we look at our paragraph you can see that the font size is set to 15 and the line height is 1.2. If we go to computed we can now see that the font size is 15 pixels and the line height is set to 18 pixels. Again, if we multiply 1.2 times 15, it gives us 18. So that's where these numbers are coming from. These units are fixed units, which means that they have no relationship on anything else on the page. Let me show you how we can alter this by using some of the relative units. I'm going to go back to my HTML and I'm going to add some additional classes to the divs. It is possible to have more than one class name assigned to any given element. I need to make sure that none of these start with numbers or funky characters. So for the second div, I couldn't name this percent. That would not work. I have to actually spell this out. Now that I've done this, if we save our page, nothing is going to change. All we've done is given another class name or another hook so that we can uniquely target these div elements. Let's now go back into our CSS. I'm going to go ahead and make a rule for the .px box, which is our first box, and we're going to specify the absolute width unit of 300 pixels. I'll go ahead and I'll make rules for the other divs and we're just going to go ahead and specify width for all of these using the numbers that are within the text of the divs. Because these are classes, I am targeting the selector starting with the period, which allows me to identify this as a class item. If we go ahead and save our page and go to the browser and refresh, you can see that the size of the divs has now changed. And if I resize my page, you will see that the percent based width div is going to grow and or shrink depending on the size of the page. Our 300 pixel element is going to stay fixed and the 10m and 10rem elements are going to appear identical currently. If we look at these elements and we go to the computed tab and we scroll down and find width, you can see that the width is currently set to 160 pixels. Remember, our base unit of measurement for our page is 16 pixels. So 16 times 10 is giving us 160 pixels for the width of each of these items. Let me show you the difference between M's and REMs. Currently, the base font size is 16. If we redefine that or redefine the base font size on the parent element, any element that is using REMs will be affected. So for instance, if we come to the main element and make a rule, and let's just go ahead and declare that the font size on the main element is 20 pixels. Watch what happens when I refresh my page. You can see that our absolutely declared values, the H1 in the paragraph, had no change. But notice what happens to the text that's inside of our div elements. The div elements are all children of main. And if you notice, the text has gotten bigger. What's happening is the text within those elements is now set to 20 pixels. So if I select any of these elements and we find font size in the list, you can see how it's set to 20 pixels. We've now redefined the ancestors font size, 
which in turn is affecting the font size of these divs. In addition, if we compare the M and REM units, you can see that the M div is slightly larger than the REM div. If we check the width of these elements in the computed sizes, you can see that the M div is set to 200 pixels. And that makes sense. Its ancestor or parent is set to 20 pixels as the base font size. So if we multiply 20 by 10, it gives us 200. If we look at the div with the class of rem and we look in our computed styles, you'll notice that the width is set to 160 pixels. The rem unit of measurement is based on the root elements font size. So if we go to the root element, which is the HTML element, the root font size is currently 16 pixels. If we multiply 16 by 10, we get 160. So you'll see that this is tied to the HTML element. Now, if I was to redefine the font size of the HTML element, watch what happens. I'm going to come into my CSS. We'll make a rule on HTML and we'll set the font size to 10 pixels. If we do this and we refresh, watch what happens to everything on our page. The text size does not change at all. And that's because we're using our absolute units on the H1 and on the paragraph tag. Within main, we're using a font size of 20. So those don't change either. But if we look at our div with a class of rem, it has now gotten slightly smaller. And if we go to computed and scroll down to width, you'll see the width is now 100 pixels. It is now multiplying the base font size or the root font size of the page which has now been set to 10 pixels by 10, giving us an overall width of 100. This works in a similar fashion if we were to change the unit of measurement on our heading tag to M's. So instead of using 36 pixels, if I change this to 2.25, which would be the equivalent of 36 pixels, if the base font size was still set to 16 pixels, so let me show you the math so that you understand how this is configured and then we'll see what's happening on our page. If we take 36 pixels and we divide it by 16, that's going to give us 2.25. So that's where the value is coming from. If we save this and we refresh, you can see how the size of our H1 has changed. So let's see what's happening. If we select this element, you can see that the font size is set to 45. Where is 45 coming from? Well, you have to remember that we assigned a font size of 20 pixels on main. Main is now the ancestor of H1. So when we actually use 2.25, instead of multiplying by 16, giving us 36, it now is actually taking 2.25 multiplying it by 20, which gives us 45 pixels. Instead of using the M unit of measurement, if we change this to REMS and we save, watch what happens to the font size of our H1. It now gets much smaller. And if we go and check under our computed tab, the font size is now 22 and a half pixels. So once again, it is multiplying 2.25 by the root font size, which is now set to 10 pixels, and that gives us 22 and a half. So hopefully now you understand the difference between the relative and the absolute units. We will be using both relative and absolute units throughout our course, but I did want to explain these numeric values and how they may impact the elements that you have on your page so that you understand the difference between them all.